Hey, what's up? We're doing it again. We're releasing again to Google Play. Um, I think it's the third time we do it on this channel for the sole purpose that it keeps changing. So this time around, it's the 2020 version. We're going to be looking at the Google Play. Our goal today will be to take this little bad boy over here and put it on the store so everybody can access it. Um, not just test it, but also just access it and download it from the Google Play Store. So it's going to be split in three parts. First one is have a developer account. Second one will be to create your store listing. And the third one will be to wait, which is where I'm at right now. By the time I'm recording this, I have to wait for a review for them to approve. Yeah, it's fairly easy. So let's get started. Welcome to the Google Play website. The date is November 2020, and we have yet again a new update for the Google Play console. So the first step you'll have to do today, and our goal, of course, is to publish your game, is to head over to the play.google.com slash console. Make sure you head to the console, else you're going to be stuck in the portal uh, with all the games on it. So going here on the top right, I will have to sign in. Now this process has to do with your Google account. Of course, you choose your Google account, and then beneath that, there will be something called a developer account. If you don't have one already, you'll have to buy into this program. So you have to buy yourself a developer account and it is a one-time fee. It's a one-time $25 USD fee. So you only have to pay this once and then you'll have your developer account. You can publish as many games as you want on it. Once you enter on the Google Play console, you will have the option to create a new app. Obviously, this is what we'll be doing today. So I'll go ahead and I'll create mine. This first screen here has really basic information regarding your name. Are you a app or a game? In our case, we're a game. Um, we are free. And also we agree with both the developer program policies and also the US export law. Once we have this, we'll now have a screen just for a game. Once you're done with that, you'll have a dashboard only for your application. So in this case, the Subway Skater. On the left hand side, you'll see a bunch of services I have just for this app. For example, we can see analytics on our store performances, um, rating and review, vitals, this is when the application crash, your product if you have some in-app purchases, financial report if you made money, and a um, couple of other things. So here, your releases. Our goal right now will be to set up the store so we can have a store listing as soon as possible. We can send that over to our friend and they can download it. Um, I'm going to go and look for the task I need to release my app. First, I need to complete the initial setup. So it's funny because um, this dashboard changes all the time. Initially, all you have to do is really just go under production and then release something. But um, things seem to have changed. So here, we'll go to the app access first. Now, application access, we actually don't need any special access. So we don't need to sign up from another website. We don't need to do any prerequisite before we use all the content in our app. So all the functionalities are available to me. We'll move on to the second step, which I believe was the ads. Yes, my app contained ads in this case. Next up, content rating. Go ahead and fill the questionnaire. This is going to give a rating to your game. So let's see, we have a game. And then it's going to ask you if you have any violence, fear, sexuality, similarly gambling. No to all of these in my case, because it's quite a friendly game. There is none of that. Um, we don't share the physical location. We don't allow IAP at the moment. Of course, we'll have to change that if we include IAP. No voice chat, no Nazi symbol. That's, okay, that's good. Um, nope, nothing about Korea. Nope, this is not a how to make a bomb. And finally, no, there is no terrorism. So we have a app that is very, very clean. Let's hit save, next. And it's going to give us a rating. And of course, it's just a perfect, well, it's not a perfect rating. It's not meant to be say perfect, but it's E for everyone. So everybody could access this. Okay, submit this and then we are pretty much done. Let's go back. And um, actually, I'm going to go on my play console, go back on my thing so I can go and uh, follow this first step initial setup. What is our target audience is somewhere in between all of that, actually, 13, um, 13 to 18 and over. Now, this one is part of the new rules with the children's below 13. Um, for some reason, your app could 
unintentionally appeal to children and I'm not quite sure what to answer in this one because for example in my app it's a small cartoony penguin. Now yes it could technically appeal to children because it's some graphics that is cartoony but I I don't know I'm just gonna say now for the moment. <laughs> okay here's what you told us yep yep and let's save. So that is our target audience done and finally we have one more called news app. Is your app a news app? Nope. Perfect, move on. Manage how your app is organized and presented. Let's see. We are, of course, a game. We are an arcade game in this case. We could add some tags. So, for example, oh, what is this? There is a tag for Endless Runner, so I'm going to put that in there. Listing contact is here. I don't actually need to input my phone number. We do have a website, so I'll put that in there. And I'm pretty much done with this one, so let's move back. Set up your store listing. So this is where it gets interesting. This is where we'll have a couple of requirements as well. We'll need a short description, a full description, couple of graphics, and what else? A video is something that really helps you out a lot. So if we ever have video, which we don't at the moment, let's make sure to input it in here. When you make your graphic for the store listing, make sure you go ahead and you um, you take the suggested dimension. For example, here we have the featured graphic. You're looking to have something that is 1024 by 500. So when you create those, make sure you have the exactly uh, exactly the same ones. And I just made a mistake. It's actually 500. Okay. Something I do when I take those picture is I go inside of the game and then I just grab myself the main camera. Um, I make sure I'm on play mode so I don't modify anything and I switch to a free aspect, make it full screen and just move around in the scene view, control shift and F on the main camera. I'm going to disable the brain so it can actually move. And I look at the preview. If I think the preview is good, then I go inside of the game scene and I take a screenshot of that. So for example, something like this could be looking good for the store. Yeah, something like this. So I head over to my game view oh, and I, I'm going to delete my UI and just take a picture of that. Paste that in Photoshop and recenter it if needed. So of course, this could be anything. It doesn't have to be um, pictures from the game, but in my case it is, but it could be concept art, could be something an artist make uh, if you're going for a very specific um, store listing. When it comes down to the phone screenshot, they say you have to take in between 320 and also 3840 in terms of pixels. Um, what I would do in your case is I would take the resolution you've been developing in. For example, in my case, I'm using 1920 by 1080. This is portrait for, um, I'm not quite sure which phone, but it's actually a good, good resolution for portrait. So it's 16 per 9 and I'll be using exactly that resolution. So 1920 by 1080. Same thing, I'll head into Photoshop, 1920 by 1080. Okay, so I've inputted a total of five screenshots and I don't have any for the 7 inch tablet or the 10 inch tablet, which I think is going to make me ineligible for the people who do have on tablets to, to find my game on Google Play. But I don't think it's actually a required field like it says here. We'll find out later. I'm going to go back to the dashboard, look at where we're at. It says we can choose a, um, a small number of tester. We can test with a bigger group. We can let anyone sign up and test. So those three tasks right here are all about testing. Build excitement. Um, so this is a marketing campaign. And then finally, publish your app with Google Play, which I think we're going to do right now, actually. So let's select the country and region we'd like to push in. I'll create a new release, top right. And we are going to be asked to, what is this? Exactly? Okay, so app sign in by Google Play. We're going to have to sign our application. I'm actually going to decide for the first time to let Google manage my app sign in. So I did a click on the continue button and it's going to ask me for app bundle and APKs. So I'm going to go ahead and actually turn this off, find my build settings and then under build settings, I will have to go under player settings. Let's scroll down where I'm currently in Android. So I'm going to scroll down under the publishing settings. And we have the key store manager, which, um, which we could use a brand new one to start off fresh with the company, or we could use one that is existing. 
I'm not going to go over uh, using one that is already existing because at that point you probably already know how to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and create myself a new key store. So create new anywhere in my case and make sure that you save this somewhere safe and you're going to have to save this somewhere safe because this could be used for every single app in your organization. This could be used only for this. It really depends on where you want to use this, but do note that if you lose it, you won't be able to upload a update for your application. So go ahead and fill in more information. Let's add the key. And we had a new key created. Do you want to set them as your project key store and project key? Of course I do. So now you'll find that we have a custom key store, which, um, you know, you can also get it now from this place. And what else do we have to do at this point? The password is entered. Do know that you have to enter the password every single time that um, you make a new build that you want to upload. So we don't need any custom in this Mimify. Um, we could Mimify with Gradle, but I'll do that later if everything works. One more thing that I forgot is that you have to actually um, be targeting the API level 29 and above at the moment on Google on Google Play. It's a new requirement for security purpose, so you can go and change that under player settings. And then under player settings, you'll find um, the other settings. And you can change the API, so minimum API level to 29. Now, it will come with a bunch of problems if you don't have... Um, if you don't have the updated version of the Android SDK. For example, in my case, if I try to build right now, and this is going to be my release candidate, I try to build, and it's going to ask me for required, um, well, first, it's going to ask me to update my Android SDK. If you do that, it ain't going to work, and if you do hi use highest install, in my case, it's, it's 28 right now, so that won't cut it. So one thing that I'll try out is that I'll update my LTS version of NT 2019.4 to 0.4.14. Right now I'm on 0.4.2 F1 and I'm going to go um, 12 version above that, you could say. And I'll download that, see if this works, see I have the updated SDK in there. All right, so let's give this a try with a newer version of Unity, which is exactly the same. So it's 19.4 but this time dot 14, which is a much later version in the LTS, um, in the LTS suite. So I'll go under the player settings. By the way, you most likely already have this version. <laughs> um, and I'm going to choose the API level 29. So it's already in there. Let's give this a try and hope that it has been updated. And obviously we'll need to sign, since we closed off the application, I have to go back and assign the application once more. So under my publishing settings, um, I'll enter my password for both the key store and then the application within the key store. Try to build once more. And it seems like this version is actually supported. So I'm quite happy about that. We'll receive a build that contains the API level 29 and we'll be able to put that on the Google Play services. And now we have the AAB, which stands for the Android Application Bundle. We can drag and drop it directly in this screen, give it a name. So this is gonna be my release candidate. Do note that this name will not be reflected on the Google Play Store. It's only for you to identify this uh, specific release. You can also have a release note. So this one um, has some markup. So for example, here, for the English language, you could go ahead and um, also have French. So I actually, maybe FR Canada, that works. I believe so, okay. Oh, no, it's not supported. Okay, well, we don't exist here. I give it a very short description here for the initial release. And then as I was doing that, the, ad, the um, app bundle finally got uploaded and we have it right here. If you have any more errors when it comes down to um, uploading, we've tried once. It told us that we need to have the target SDK of 29 and above. We fixed that. But if you have anything else, please let me know in the, in the uh, section down below in the comment, in the resources, because I want to help you figure these bugs out. They are quite annoying and um, sometimes they, they take quite a lot of time to, uh, to figure out on your own. So please let me help you with that. Once we are done with this, we're going to hit the save button, review the release. And let's see where we're at. There's one error. No country or region have been selected for this track. At least one country has to be in the uh, rollout region. 
Okay, so that's not going to be a problem to actually find which page this is because it's quite confusing to look at everything. Uh, I'm going to go back on the dashboard, scroll all the way down and do a select countries in region. Let's go ahead and do that here. Add countries. Can I add all of them? Is there a button to add everybody? Rest of the world. Okay, that's a good start. And I think we're just going to have to go through all of them. Oh, no, we can click here. Okay, cool. So we got that. Add countries and region. Uh, there is no restriction anywhere because there is no racial thing going on. There is no religion going on. I mean, I don't see why it would restrict the application to anybody in this case. So available for the whole world. And now let's go ahead back to the dashboard. Scroll down all the way. And I'm going to review and rule out the release. So here we are. I'm going to go under edit. Review the release. And it seems like everything is fine. We do have two warnings that come from our code in Unity. Because it's not native code, it's going to give you a couple of errors, like it, it can't find the symbols. So that's totally normal for our case. Um, if you're looking to get some more information out of your crash, you can actually hook up the Unity Analytics in there. And that's going to do the exact same thing. And finally, start rollout to production, bottom right. And um, I think we're good. I think we got it. It's being reviewed. So I'm going to go take some well-deserved rest. It's a big day tomorrow and I will come back and I'll tell you if everything worked. Spoiler alert, it did. We can now view it on Google Play if you wish. So it's all there with the information. Um, yeah, <laughs> everything is there. And before we end this video, I'd like to say one thing. First, I'm really thankful to everybody who purchased the Udemy course and also uh, the full implementation of what we've done today is actually done here as well. So we've made a full game first and then we eventually published it to the Google Play Store and that just got released pretty much at the same time as this video because I, I'm getting two birds in one stone. So uh, do note that in this course, however, next, um, next week, we're going to be looking at doing the achievement and leaderboard. And then after that, section number 15 is going to be about releasing to the Apple Store. Also be on the lookout for section number 14 and 15, which is going to be about uh, leaderboard achievements in Google Play. And then 15 is going to be about releasing over to the Apple Store. So if you're interested in that, I'm going to be releasing it directly on the Udemy course first. And then eventually you're going to see a video on the YouTube channel as well. So it's not going to be uh, behind a pay gate. But if you wish to purchase the Udemy course, it helps me out quite a lot. What even helps me out more than that is purchasing the Udemy course and then leaving me a rating. That's uh, always very appreciated. All right, I'm done selling my stuff and I'll see you later. Bye.